file servers ftp h base http java jms mq rest sap and so and yeah so these are, these are the options that are available so in effect the connect uh, hyphen rules will ensure that uh, we can uh, get the data right so from an external entity so let, let's see the parameters just to be a little bit more clear so if you see here the connect hyphen soap tells the system that we have to use a soap protocol and then here obviously what to the service name and uh, how do you want to execute it do you want to run immediately or you have an option to uh, this is kind of an interesting option say what happens is um, so what happens is you uh, this act, this step gets ex executed after which this step comes in so what happens in connect soap is uh, or can call in the execution mode run is that this immediately makes the call to an external system okay and it waits for the response to come back okay when the response comes back only then the execution is forwarded to the next step only then it will start the step three so that is what happens that's the normal behavior so you make the call you get the response only then you move forward in the execution of this activity now what if i don't want to wait for it um, suppose this you've made a connect so call but when you are you haven't got back the response yet so it takes a lot of time say for example it takes like one minute okay so what you do is you, so there is a delay of more than one minute so what you do you are waiting at the step two okay um so instead of you don't want to wait so what you do you make it as run in parallel so what happens is it uh, it doesn't wait for the step instead the execution goes on to the next step so you make the call you say okay um, get give me the response whenever possible i will go ahead with the rest of the execution so that is the option of this run in parallel but this connect soap here we will have the um, now further to this one you can see uh, different service names so let's open a connect soap rule and now we will be doing this in integration as well but uh, you can just take a look at it this connect soap rule is an integration rule which we will study in our integration chapter but um, just know that this is how you would be making the call here okay and if you then after this you have something like port as a service url that you want to connect to so the interesting thing is you can connect to the endpoint url here on this connect soap okay here on this endpoint url you can enter the end url or if you don't enter anything there then it will pick it up from this connect soap rule so on this connect soap rule you will have the endpoint url here here this you see here the service endpoint url so currently it's referenced as a property you can reference it from a data page uh, or you can reference it from um, um, you can hard code the value and all that here okay all right so that is about yeah i hope that's clear um yeah, uh, those and all, those and all we will not be covering now. We will be covering all that and how to map the request and response. Uh, that and all we will be not be covering here. Uh, we will be covering that in the integration chapters. So, if you want to know, it's here on this request. You have other rules like um, this is where you map the request, and this is where you map the response. So. We will not be covering that now. I will cover that in the integration chapters. Right. The CMI is to store attachment. Yeah. So in event 7.x, um, yeah, you have option to uh, to use CMIS to get the external entity and to store the attachments. Yes, it is very much practiced in 7.x as well. 
so if you see here um, to integrate with the content management system you will be doing that under this cases and data here not case so is it hold on put them under documentation yeah here this one content management so if you see enable for attachments you can give the connector name and all that um so yeah yeah uh, so cmis is uh, something that's still practiced in pega so and it's a practice in pega 7 as well right okay i hope your question is clear um, so this is the points where you have the service this is where you map the request and response we will do an elaborate discussion on that in the application um, in the integration chapter where we actually will, will be building an external integration right so generally most of this will be done by the wizard um, if you yeah, but that's all. Right, so what we're going to cover in today's session is on routing. So come here to the course over here. Yeah. So we already touched upon case attachments in one of the early sessions and we did add the attachments as well so i think that's all uh, regarding that now with routing this is routing and get next work is what we're going to take a look at in today's session so uh, what's important to understand is um, Pega, uh, because Pega is a bpm based application it's very important that um, um, the work that is to be done can be routed to uh, we can have a complex complicated logic to route um, the particular work object so what can happen is um, uh, generally whenever the work is to be completed on the business flow is to be completed um, say for example in our case um here on the cases say for example you expect a person with a particular skill set to be able to enter the claim information correctly you don't expect this work to be done by um, any random person you have a designated group of people who can do this claim data capture Okay, so basically that's what you're doing here, right? You enter the claim information or you are going to capture the data from a customer. So you expect this to be done by a speci by specific uh, people with a specific skill set. Okay, so. See, so you can expect a person with a specific skill set or you can see someone with a specific group okay so um, similarly even this investigation claim investigation is to be done by a specific skill set it should not be set done by a random person okay so uh, yeah so what you have to understand is how to write a logic or reuse Pegas out of the box logic to ensure that whenever you're doing this kind of a design uh, you get the right data or you assign to the right people so for that what you have to create at the onset is you need to create something called as a skill set so let's take a look at what are skill sets so what you need to do is if you go to the organization here Operator ID. So let's take an operator like the user operator. Okay. Now here. Yeah. 
under this work tab we can see a couple of things here first one here is a skill and rating okay so here you can give a skill like um, uh, data entry okay which is a skill for this person and he's like he's an expert in that so data entry is five so similarly you can add other skills and you can associate it with this person okay and similarly you can even associate work baskets so the work basket is uh, as we learned earlier or i think you should be aware by now work basket and work list they're like two entities in pega uh, so if you have a work object assigned specifically to you you can say that it is in your work list okay so you have Right, so you can have another one called as work basket. So what this will have is this will have so you have the work list, so which will be the work object data which is specifically assigned to you. Then you have the work basket here. okay so which will be accessible by multiple people so it's like it's a literal word meaning like the basket which is accessible by multiple people okay so you have operator one and you have operator two all these operators can view this particular work basket okay now if you look at this here This is an exercise on skill routing. There is another option called as DW as well. But um, yeah, so if you see here, just uh, take a look at this image. Right. So we saw this particular skill now. We saw what is a work basket that we can assign it to. And then you have this checkbox saying that operator is able to receive work, which means that he can be assigned work. Okay then it says uh, so the first thing here is sorry, uh, get from work baskets first so what happens is if you have a list of work baskets entered here the system will first look from the list of work baskets entered here uh, to search and get you the correct uh, task that you have to assign to you have to be given so what happens what we're trying to convey here is there are basically two types of routing that is with regard to this one so what it says is first one is called as push okay the other routing technique is called as routing methodology is called as pull so which means that uh, if you push a work object to some particular person Okay, so which means that you are programmatically going to push that work object to this particular person. But if you say pull, again it's going to be programmatic, but you have a button and this person wishes to work on something, then he will pull from some work basket. Okay, so let me just come again. So push means that you are going to um mandatorily hand over the task to this person you don't give an option give him an option to work on anything whereas pull means he will automatically pull the data pull the work object from the uh, work basket okay so he's going to pull it the other is going to assign to him okay so uh, yeah so if if you say get from work baskets first this is a methodology for the pull option okay then even this is also for pull options the second option here is merge work baskets so all this is available on the operator id okay the tab that we just saw now so here it says merge work baskets which means that if i have like say two or three work baskets instead of going and looking the first then the second and then the third you see that 
the system is telling him that we're going to tell the system that don't look that way. Merge all of them together and give me the one with the highest urgency. Okay, that is the next option. Uh, then there is an option called as work basket assignment in users work group. Um, so what happens here is by default for the routing for the routing uh, usage, we have something like organization division uh, and unit. So which means that um, generally we will always take into account the operators, uh, organization division and unit for routing the data, routing the work object. Now, if say, for example, we have a scenario like um, this. So, so, so what happens is uh, you have you know, the organization. Okay, then you have the division. Then you have the unit. So you have div one. This is the division one. Then you have something like division two. And then U one. So this is a unit one, unit two, and this is unit three, and this is unit four. Okay, so So now what happens is, uh, when generally when you are routing um, an operator, if you see here, an operator can be part of only one unit. Okay, so you can have an operator one, an operator two here. Then what can happen is, uh, if operator three, and your operator four here okay. and similarly five six seven eight like all on different levels now what happens is if there is a requirement um say because in business it, it's not necessary to always hard code that this person this o1 is always associated with this unit um, but for cost purpose and you know uh, assigning work and all that this is all right but in real world uh, you might have scenarios where for some time you want to create a special group special work group or a group of people who are from say one guy is from this unit then you have one guy from this unit then you may even have say for example four, five six then you may have a person from this unit or six. So now if you want to group all these three people together, you have a concept called as work group. Okay, so this is called as work group. So what happens is if you want people from different units to work together in one group, that is called as a work group. So generally the work group will have something called as a uh, it will have something called as a, a supervisor okay so supervisor then you'll have something called as a work basket for this particular work group and things like that so it's, so that is the concept of work group and um, so the option now with that's coming with regarding with regard to routing here it says that use all work basket assignment and users work group so it says that use all the assignments which are available, all the work basket assignments which are there in that particular user's work group. So keep in mind that work group is not a mandatory thing. So uh, you may or may not have a work group, but if you have, you define it here. Okay. So having a work group is a standard practice. So uh, 
So let's aim. So that is about the work group concept. And if you see here, so, so let's just go through this all over again. So you have a push and pull routing mechanism by default. Okay, so now uh, what happens is if you want to do the pull routing, okay, then you have the option here. So whatever is options that we decided here is going to be applicable if you open your manager portal or say for example your user portal. Let me launch the user portal. So you see here on the top, you see something called as next assignment. So this is, yeah, one operator can belong only to one work group. That's correct. So if you see here, there's a next assignment button. The moment you click on this, system is going to um, pull things from a list. Okay, so it, it will have, it will pull it from a list and assign an item for you. Okay, so uh, this item can be in a work basket, um, in a previously in a work basket, and from that it will look and it will find it for you. So the order in which it looks is this one. So it will get in the work basket first, it will merge the work baskets, um, then finally it will look at the work group and give it for you. So this push, uh, sorry, this pull option, as a, as a user, you have the option to pull the case to work when you want. Okay, so say by clicking on the work basket directly, or using the get next one. Okay, and push is when uh, he does not get to select. So you programmatically do that. So how you do that is, say for example here, so let's open this, investigate the claim flow. So if you look at this assignment here, here there's an option called as route two. So you say current operator, which means that the person who's currently working on it, or if I say operator name here, I can select whichever operator that I want, that I want it to be routed to. This is like, this is all part of pull route, push route, okay? So, and then you click on work basket. This is like you assign it to a work basket. Or if you click on question, then you can expect the system to route it to one work basket or if you want it, you can even create a link which can be even accessible to external entities. That is how this external option is. That is called as a directed web access. So we will look at that in some time. But the other one is to a work list, which is, again, you can write your own activity to determine who is the person to whom you want to route it at a runtime. Okay, so we're going to see um, that practicals of all this in a bit, but know that push is, uh, you generally configure it on the assignment ship. So you can really configure So this is like the sizes on this one. So we have like three exercises to be done today. So what I was talking to you about was routing and the get next to work. So we have to create an exercise on the, you see here this. This is called as the directed web access, short as DWA. So if you see here, you can select custom, and then you can select external. So when you select external, you have to give these details, okay? So which means that you're going to send a link kind of thing to an external entity. So if you see here, you will see that um, you have an option here via an email. 
okay so this must you must have seen this in real world as well sometimes you get an email from a person or or some system saying that um, can you please fill out the survey and these these are the details so that information is actually stored in an email here and you click on this one and then uh, you enter the details okay so this can be this can be an operator who's not um, currently in the application okay it could be an external completely external person so he does not even need to have access to uh, pickup okay all right so that is okay. so we will get started on the next exercise um, then there is about skill routing so which is again you associate a skill and then this is again you can give it on the push so on the assignment properties here whenever you set it on the assignment properties it means you're going to push the data okay so if you see that it says route to custom it says work list and then you're going to say to a leveled group Okay, so this is this is the router name for or the activity that actually does the routing for skills. So you not just even level group, you have something like a to skilled work basket or to skilled person. You have multiple other routing options. Here you will give the skill name, then you say okay, I need at least a level four, and this is like mandatory. Okay. And the next option that is available is yeah, so you can look at a work basket, you can route a work object to a work basket, okay. And then what happens is uh, if you see here, you have the work basket here, and the moment you click on next assignment, you're going to pull from there. So you click on this next assignment here okay so you're going to pull the work object from there okay all right so let's get started with all these exercises so so you have two types of routing mechanism you say push when you want to push the work object to some person programmatically when you want to pull the uh, the information from a work basket uh, then you use a pull routing um, yeah so you have dwa which stands for directed web access um so yeah so those are the different options that are available okay so let's get started with an exercise to implement all of this okay so Okay, so let us now first. Um, okay, got this. Right, so this is exercise on routing. So we will get started with our car insurance claim case. So here we have entered claim information. Okay, so um, as we saw that this was a screen flow. So the unique thing about screen flows is that you expect it all these steps to be fulfilled, fulfilled by one individual person okay so and the routing option unlike in normal flows the routing option will always be in the assignment but for screen flows the routing option will be on the start ship okay so which means that if you want all these to be assigned to just one person there's no point coming and configuring the same thing here on all these assignments instead you route you put it on this particular start ship so let's put the claim claimant info in uh, say you have this option here a router so i can give two work basket okay so if you see here bpm routing api assigned to a specific work basket okay so i will say route to a particular work basket say for example let me open my operator id here say a user operator id 
and by default it says um, the work group is default at the rate AIGI and here you don't have any work baskets here so let's give a work basket okay so we'll give a work basket here um, we'll give Rahul, a work basket. Rahul I have one question just a minute here for the screen flow so now that we have seen uh, the screen flow assignment is done on start shape mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, if it is done on start shape, it is going to be always done by one operator, right? There is a catch in PDN, like it is generally done by one operator. I mean, what is generally? It's always right if it is in start flow. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah that, that's the wrong usage. It's not generally, right. it's always. Always, right? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So uh, you can give it to the work basket now. So let's uh, probably create a work basket. So it's like um, you can say and um, data entry, okay. And always, whenever you give work basket name, you will give the data entry WB. So it's just like a standard practice. So you can click on the magnifying glass here, which should help us in creating a new work basket. So it says the work basket record. You can give a description saying that. Entry work basket. basket for collecting payment info. Okay, so we'll click on create and open. And you see, here you have to give the organization division unit. So the organization for the work basket. Get, um, same as your operator currently we get the same operate or claim one and here I think um, yeah so you have to give a work group which your current operator is part of so you can create a work group as well for your particular operator which will be useful later as well so here let's create a new work group Okay, hard from here as well. So we will give a work group. So we'll create two work groups as I was showing you earlier. We can have uh, one work group which is both these people. Okay, we can put all both of them into one work group, and then these two guys we can put into a different work group. Okay, now this work group is supposed to be uh, for data entry and this work group is supposed to be for investigation of the particular case okay so let's create the first um, work group for data entry so let's say data entry at AIGI so we'll click on the magnifying glass here so we say And we will give what is a default work basket for this is obviously the data entry WB. It's uh, kind of like a circular thing. So here as of now, I'll just give default so that I can save it first. Okay, once I've saved it, we'll give this. We'll come here and then I will first set data entry work basket. So you can give a manager name as well. Right. Now if you come here, yeah, so I think we are done here. So keep in mind that uh, we can, we have the option to give multiple managers for this particular work group. So that's just another option that is available, but by default, you have to always have at least one manager. Okay. So what we did is we created a work um, basket and we associated it with the work group. Now, similarly, we can create one more work basket. So that we will create a name. Uh, instance. Not found. Hold on, data entry 
was not being taken okay so we will create a new um, work basket so we will save as this data entry work basket instead we will say um, claim investigation work basket okay and let's see. Investigation basket. Good. So to save this. Now I can give name like claim invest. So say we can say car. I'll say claim invest. AIGI. Yeah, Okay, so that is the name of the work group that will we will create. Short description we can give something more interesting like claim investigation. Here, G. Okay, so here all of this we can give the same manager for now. And the default work basket is claim investigation topic. So we have now created two work baskets and two work groups. Okay. Now we can create. Um, actually, we should ideally be now creating two separate operators as well, or three or four operators. So we can give. Um, probably we'll just create four operators as well. Okay. So we will say uh, data entry one, data entry two, and then we will give a claim uh, investigator one, investigator two. Okay, so we can just quickly save as all these the user operator ID. Keep in mind that these are all users, so you need to open the user at AIGI and just do a save as of that. Okay, so here we can give the name like uh, give DE, let's start from data entry one. Let's say DE one. Okay, so similarly, I will just save as this as T2. Now we can we can now um, save as another one, which is claim. So say I am a skate robot one. So I will say IB one. Okay, at AIGI. So similarly, now here on these this one, I do IB two. Now be really careful whenever you do this because if you wrong, if you configure this wrong, which almost happens all the time in real systems, so it will be quite difficult to debug it later. Okay. But yeah, doing that is so interesting in one way. So here you can give the username also like this get entry one and email just you can you can change that as well. Right. And similarly, now for an operator, now if you come here to this work tab, you have to change this work group to we have work group as um, data entry AIGI. Okay, and uh, by default, you don't you're not now mandated to uh, put a work basket here because this work group is already mapped to a work basket. So that works you don't specifically need to give it here 
but you can give it here if you want if you want to put a work basket which is not there mapped to this work group okay so this work group is mapped to one work basket if you don't want that work basket uh, if you I mean, if you want some additional work baskets that you can again map it here as well okay now, now if you come here so d2 here again i can just give it as username will change it so we'll say d2 now if i go to the work tab we'll change this to time tree now similarly in investigator one we will need to change this now we'll say So if you don't change the full name and email, there is no um, there is no uh, functional impact. But uh, at least during the UI, there may be a difference. Okay. So here in the work group, we will add the work group as claim investigation investigator AI GI. Right? So save here and I go to IV two. And then we are almost done. So I'll okay, give here. And if you go to the work tab, see here. Right. So we have uh, all the four operators. Now what we can do is we can now go to uh, go into our first exercise uh, like implement our first exercise for getting the next assignment so what we can do is if you go to this um, start shape so i will say uh, i'm going to route it to the work basket by the name get entry wp simply you need to give them that in double quotes okay so this two work basket is a, a routing activity which is again customizable if you open this one here it all that it does is it just does a property set uh, to with this assign to you whatever information that we gave there is available as a param.work basket and you just assign it to that person okay now you click on submit here save it now let this log in as so let's first create a case here from from our admin portal okay or the developer portal you create it here uh, it says uh, unable to open assignees data admin operator id data entry work basket so what does that mean let's see here it says it's not able to let's see here it says it's not able to uh, okay so hold on i think it's expecting that to be hard code operator id there hold on let's open this one we'll say to work basket okay uh, all right so what um, the screen flow is by default doing is it is checking um if uh, it's directly trying to assign it to one single operator okay now what the screen flow is doing is it was trying to directly assign it to an operator id that is why we were getting that error so instead of uh, associating it to a particular work basket uh, we ought to give it to a work uh, to a uh, to a work list so which is to an individual person so that was, that's the thing about screenflow right you have to give it to a single person or uh, you it will be worked upon by one person alone 
but even it's not even allowing us to even temporarily place it in a work basket and then pull it from there. So in that scenarios, so what you do in, in real-time systems, the solution to such a problem is to create a wrapper flow around the screen flows and then in that you call the screen flow. Okay, so for that what you do is, so as a first step, we will create a new flow. So we'll go to this process and we'll create a new flow at the work level and the work pool level and then what we want to do here so AIGI claims work okay and then I'll give the name here like screen flow wrapper okay I will say claim it flow wrapper so I'll click on create and open and then here I will just give a uh, sub process. Okay. And on the sub process, we will say filter flow by screen flows. And I think we'll have to give it on the current page. And we'll give it the flow name here. But again, here I think we're not able to set no, we don't. I don't think I'm not seeing the option. I think I think it's my bad. Uh, thought there was an option here on this sub process, but either way, we're not getting that option here. All right, so what we will do now is we will just ignore this. Um, okay, so we will not push it to a work basket. Instead, we will say to a work list. Okay, so we will see what is the option for a, uh, a push. This is uh, this is the option for a push router. So it, which means that you programmatically are going to push it to a particular person. So you can uh, push it to a single person like this to work list. And you can assign it to uh, say for example I say data entry one okay like let's up it here so now if you create the flow by default you're going to push it to a single person you see here it's on this data entry one now if you open if you log in here as the de1 at AIGI then what happens is you see here in this case it's a C hyphen 33 is assigned to him. In this case C hyphen 33 is assigned to this operator. So you are essentially um, forcefully pushing the item to that particular person. Okay, so this is a, so this example that we saw now is an example of uh, data entry uh, push shopping where you programmatically push it to that particular person. Now you can modify this a little bit more uh, to uh, say for example there are other routing options like um, to the person who uh, created it okay and you can again give it uh, to uh, a simple skilled work group so this is now so now we the first thing that we saw was to forcefully assign it to a particular person that is push routing now the other option is to assign it to a person based on his skill okay so let's see what, what is the skill uh, how to do that so for this we can think we will have to go for to skills group okay so or, or even to level group so it says that route to available skilled work group operator. So here I'd say that the work group that we need is so data entry work group. Okay. Now here what happens is you can decide what is the skill that you want to give. So till now we have not created a skill. So let us create a skill and assign it to those operators. So let's come back to our operator IDs. 
So I will say updated on. I will change that. So the first operator now here on these operator IDs, I will associate a specific skill. So let's look at the diagram here. So for operator one, for data entry, I will give language skills. So this person is in English. Let's say EN. Okay. Now this person operator three is knowing DE. Then uh, for investigation, we can give skill like um, uh, problem solving. It's a good skill. Okay. That's a skill to have. The other skill can be like data analysis. Okay. Now, if you come here to where you associate a skill to an operator, you associate it in this operator ID. So I give the skill here, like uh, uh, I can give the skill here called as English, and I will give a rating of five for this person. Okay. So you have to create the skill first, which is again a rule. And that you would just give here, you have a rating from one to 10. And I think the skill is all, already available. English is already available. Right, so that is for the first operator. Now, if I look in our second operator, I'm gonna give here another work tab. I'm going to give here the skill called as sure. Oops, this is already available, so I'll say five. Okay, now coming to the investigator one, we will give a skill called as um, let's see if it's all something's already available, but no. So we will give we will give the skill called as problem solving. Okay. And I say that we should at least have a rating of five for this is a rating for this person. He has a rating of five for this. So you click on the magnifying glass and it gives you the option to create the skill. So it's a problem solving. Click on create and open. So now, if you come here to IV2, in the work tab, you can give the skill called as uh, data analysis. That's five. Click on the magnifying glass. Okay, now for okay, so now we have associated all the skills. Now, what we will do is if you come here to this one, to this uh, push routing, you see here I'm going to associate this to a skill group, and this is a work group here. And I'm going to give the skill here as English, okay, and I say you should have a minimum level of four, and this is required, okay. And um, if you see here, the routing is actually an activity. Unlike the earlier one that we saw, two work basket just had only two steps. But here, it's a little bit more elaborate. It says that it tries to find the available operator in the work group from use by using a function. This is how you reference a function in an activity. So you have this function called as pick balanced operator. So whatever information we give, it is going to pick using that and then find it. Suppose it does not find uh, an operator who matches the condition, then it will associate it to the operator, to the manager, to the operator manager. So it says what is a work group, and then it will find the manager and then it will assign it to that. So here is the operator. And then finally we will do the assign to option. So if you see the if you had seen the earlier option for two work basket, it just had only the step five, which was like param dot work basket is equal to param dot assigned to. So the key is just to get this parameter set. Okay, so how, how you do that is all up to you. You can write your own logic before this and then set it.
okay so here the logic is on this particular function called as pick balanced operator so it's an elaborate java function which peg has written to find uh, from that list right now moving forward we'll come here and i say yeah so i say english is four okay and then um, okay, so i just give that so for as if now it's an english this one now i say or, or let's give it german just java for the heck of it because german is for the e2 so just so that it is assigned to another operator i can give that as well right now if you create a new case can you see here that it is automatically now assigned to data entry two? So I did not actually hard code it. I just said that I need a skill German. So system automatically found data entry two person, and then it assigned to him. Now if you see here, if I just refresh this list, I don't see anything. Okay. Now what happens is I can. Uh, so I think that this shows how you going to how uh, programmatically you assign the. Uh, work item to a person this call us push shouting and we associate a skill as well to it all right now um i think yeah that was it about how you have skill based routing is now if you go to um this pretty much shows you how you have a skill based routing now yeah, so if you have multiple operators, then what happens is um, it will look at the load and then it will associate. Uh, I, I think um, it just checks um, on the urgency or something like that. I think there is a lot logic for that here. So if you open this one, this is the function. So, so I think the yeah so we're going to check the workload so I think the workload is yeah so you check on the workload of the person so you will check um, if you see here on this this particular Here, I think there is a parameter column which checks for the workload. So it checks uh, a group, and that is done using this check workload. If you see here, it checks workload as true. Okay, so by default, it will always check for the workload. It checks some other parameters like pass goal, multiplied, it. I'm not sure what these are, but it will change the workload and then. Um, assigned to the person. The person with the least workload uh, will be given uh, if he has the right skills. Okay. Now, it says to screen group and um, right. Now, going forward here, the next option that we have is we will go to this investigate claim and here what we will have this option call as on this particular assignment i will say here we will have this routing option here as expected we can select custom and so if you do this then what happens is you're going to assign it to a particular work um you can write whether you want it to a work basket or work list. But here, if you this, uh, you can push it to a work basket. So now you're pushing it to a work basket, which can be pulled by the operators. Okay, so you can set the work basket here, like the far. I think you can say investigation. Is it? So I'll say. Claim investigation work basket here. 
So now I'm assigning it to a work basket here, like claim investigation work basket. Right? And now if I let's move forward with these cases. So you have C F and 33. Suppose this person takes this particular case and then just go forward. Then you click submit here. See here now it has gone to this work basket called as claim investigation work basket. So now you can just close this and the item is no more in your list. Okay. Now if you go to this data entry 2, so there was D2 at AIGI. And we can work on this. Submit here. And you see here now it has come to this other work basket, claim investigation work basket here. Okay, now, now we have two separate cases and um, under this claim investigation work basket. Okay, so now if I were to just open my operator, say for example, I want to look at the work basket. Say, my, this is my admin operator. So the admin also, I will just associate it to the claim investigation work basket uh, work group. Okay, and then I will launch the manager portal. Now the thing with manager portal is he can see all the work baskets. So I think I need to log off. Then log in again. Yeah. So let me just log off with this admin operator ID. Or say, for example, I log in as a manager as well. So if I can open one of our manager portals. Say, this is the manager. And this manager also, we will just associate him as well to the work group claim investigation. Right? This is just so that he can see. Um, so now I log in as a manager and show you what I'm trying to get at. So here you can see the work basket. Okay. So if you just click on this one, you see those two assignments that had previously moved forward. So you have the C F and 33, then you have C F and 34. So these two have moved to this work basket that um, is just we have pushed it to this particular work basket okay now now what's important for us to know is now that these two are on this work basket how do we move forward now like um uh, these are these are there in the work basket now how do these from this work basket how does it go into these operators that is investigator one and investigator two. So that is what will be done using a pull router. So till now we were pushing the work object uh, to um, programmatically we were finding out who's the right operator using a skill set. But here now what we're going to do is we're going to pull it. Okay. So how we're going to do that is by logging in as one of this operator. Okay. And then we're going to click on this next assignment. So using the next assignment, it will check, it will scan through your work baskets in your particular operator ID, uh, or which is there in your work basket work group, and then pull an appropriate one or pull the most urgent one. Okay, so the urgency value as of now for both of these is 10. So it can pull either 33 or 34. But I think generally it pulls the one which is created uh, based on the PX create data. So the one that's created first is pulled first. So let's, let's just see that now. So what we're going to do is we're going to now log in as 
ID one, the I. I think a couple of questions. It says one operator can belong to only one work group. Yeah, that's right. One operator can belong only to one work group. Uh, if you look at the operator ID rule form here, it's pretty self-explanatory. You don't have plus here, so which means that an operator can belong to only one work group. Uh, if we have multiple operators with the same skill in a single group, I think um, that I told you it based on the workload. And can you please summarize the relationship between work group and work task and operator? Uh, yeah, I will show that. Uh, did we create IV1 and IV2 for time investigation? Yes, we did create it. So if you see here, we had created operator IDs like investigator one and investigator two. This already created. Okay. Yeah, so I will show you the diagrammatic representation and know what you're getting at. I will show that uh, after some time. All right, now, uh, if you know this is we have logged in as IV1 at AIGI, now we're going to pull the data from that work basket, okay, using this option here in this next assignment. So here I can just click on next assignment. Oh, but it says there are currently no assignments available for this user to work on. Okay, so what we will do, we will just take a look at the configuration for this IV1. And if you go to this work tab, it says here um, the work group is claim investigation AIGI, and it says here um, operator is available to receive work, which is all right. But if you see here, it says get from work baskets first. I say merge work baskets. So when I say merge work baskets, it's going to merge all these work baskets that's available here. Or, and then it gives an option called as use all work basket assignments in users work group. So because this is not checked, that is the reason that operator did not get anything. So the moment I check that, it doesn't, It you see this option goes away. That is the work basket we gave on that particular operator ID. So the moment I say this, it's, I'm going to tell that don't give me the work baskets which are there in this list here. Instead, go to the work group and then get me the work basket from there. Okay. So if you do that, now if I just free log in now again as IV1, click the next assignment. And you see here, it came up for me now. Okay. So the key concept here was, I just checkbox this, which is after you click Merge Work Basket. If you see, if you click on Merge Work Basket, you have the option either to get everything from the user's work group or get it from this work basket here. Okay, so um, yeah, so those those are the options here. So either I could have actually put the work basket here, like uh, claim investigation work basket here, even that would have worked. Okay, where was that? I think investigation work basket was it? Yeah, claim investigation work basket. So if I had given it here, even now, even with this configuration, also it would have worked. But remember, this would have entailed that I open every operator ID and um, give this work basket name here. But instead of that, I say that I don't want to do that. Instead, I will get it from my work group because I have associated a work group with the operator ID. And that work group will have all the information from there. OK. Now, uh, now similarly, now if you go to IV2, Okay, here as well, we checkbox these. Now, if you say if I want if I log off now, so now this is associated to investigator one now. So now, if you look at the manager portal here, you would see that. Um, 
there is only now one assignment under this claim investigation work basket. If I go to here, the claim investigation work basket, I just clicked on this here, and you see only C-34 is available now, because 33 is already assigned, is already pulled by the previous operator, that is IV-1. Now, if I log in as IV-2, okay, now if I click on next assignment you're pretty obvious you'll get the hyphen 34 okay so let's let's see how that works let's click on next assignment so here you got that the hyphen 34 to you okay so now it's assigned to you so you essentially what you did was you pull the case item from there and you assigned it to yourself okay so that is uh, so that is how you would do the pull dropback so you pull the case item from a work basket and then it gets assigned to you and that logic is all on this particular button okay so let's um if you see here this is the operator this is the rule that it's an activity called as get next work object so it's an elaborate activity you can take a look at it analyze the activity um yeah you can pull the assignment selectively so if you want to pull it selectively, you have to have access to that work uh, basket. So what, say for example, if you, are a, if you had manager access or you have access to this uh, grid here, this gadget here, if you have, if you give this access to the particular operators, then what you can do is you can just come and click on this work basket and then pull it directly from here. Okay, I can see these list of items here and then I can pull it directly from there. Okay, so say for example, I start the corrections claim. Okay, now I'm just doing it on behalf of the data entry to person. Because it's assigned to him, it's uh, so Okay, currently now the C35 is in this work basket. Okay, now, uh, now if I log in as this um, investigator 2 here, I go to this home page, or I go here, I don't have an option to see the work group or the work basket. It's not the work group, you don't have the option to see the work basket to selectively pull something because the uh, operator has really minimal access. Suppose I give more privilege to the operator, investigator 2. Let's come here. Now to this investigator 2, I give him access of a manager. Or in his portal, we can give that particular gadget for, I think, to be process that colon managers. Now, I log in as IV2 at AIGI. Now, if you see here, you click on this one, you see C-35 is available. Now, you can selectively look at the particular work basket and pull it from there. Okay, so that, that is uh, the that so that is an important concept that you have to be aware of so you pull the item from there you can if you have access to this particular section this one here you can show all the work baskets that you have access to and then you can select any of them and pull the keys from them or you can programmatically do it using this next assignment so because um, the actual workers never will be asked to click on this next assignment um, I mean, ideally, uh, the I'm sorry, actual workers will always not be given this work basket view. They might be just asked to just get on the next assignment and let the system decide which is the right one for you to work on. All right, so that, yeah, so that was it about that particular exercise. So we did both push and pull routing. We even did a skill routing, and um, and the next thing that is available is you can um, 
so assign it to a DWA uh, via DWA which is directed web access which means that you send an email to an external entity which has a link uh, where the person can just click on that link and you should be able to work on it. So how to do that is again this is a mode of push so you push it specifically to uh, external entities so as we know for push we need to so let's click on this car insurance claim here and in this review information we will do a push external push shortage so here i will click on this review information assignment and i'll say route to and i will give a work custom option here and i will select external okay and then i will say external and i will say routing to i think um, the option for this is yeah i don't think we need to give anything here so if you go to the assignment details here you will have the configurations here so it says what is the operator model uh, which just means that when you're giving it to an external person for entry some information what is the default access we can give to him okay so the access should be similar to a sample operator so the sample operator here i will give like de1 okay i will give the same operator model as de1 and i will say it will expire in five days give an instruction like please uh, review the, the information so the business use case that you can think of is um, yeah, this is pretty particular a good business use case so the business use case for this is um in the future say for example um this is um the data entry person enters all the details then via an email he can send it to the uh, to the actual customer and he can just take a look at it and then he will say okay this is exactly what i what i requested for so that so he cross checks all the information which the data entry person filled in okay and then we have to give a party so i will say claimant as a party i will say subject is your claim info your claim details let's say that review your claim details Okay, we can we can change the status as pending external or something like that. Okay, click submit and okay. So now what we can do here is say for now we we'll run the end to end flow. Okay, so this person we created now we see that it is assigned to data entry hyphen 2 so log, log in as de hyphen 2 now de2 and log in and then i say okay i have to finish i think i have to finish the previous one only then it will allow me to Okay, so if you see here, um, it has now gone to this review information, but I think it has entered up error or something. Let's see, here, let's not allow it to pop up. Okay, there is no party claim, so we will. I think uh, we had a party that we created. Hold on, because we gave a work party there in the configuration. Let us come here to this case here, and we had parties here, and the party name was uh, attorney. Okay. It's been for having both operator so op the reason if you go to this review information here so the so we will add the party here just for the sake of it so 
the role let's say claim it okay and you will say is a operator maybe okay so or maybe he's an external person that's the right usage here okay so we can have an initial data transform as well and you'll say new party okay we will say display on creation and yeah they should be good there so the reason why we have both operator model and party separately is because the party defines um, uh, the uh, see operator model is actually what gives a privilege and security okay party is just associated we were just telling on a business flow we're just telling that uh, this particular we are sending it to some external person from a business standpoint uh, we have to justify like who is that person or why is he there in the first place so how is he associated to our case and he's associated to us as a work party as someone who's interested in the case okay so party is there only as a functional use case whereas the operator model is there as a technical one which is to decide what is the privilege and security or things like that All right now we will run this case again let's see here now we see here the claimant information so we have to enter all the claimant information let's say a say right b.com we will click on create so this is now in data entry two and c37 say finish yeah you see here now an email has been sent and if you see here the status is pending hyphen external okay and if you click on this it says that um, it says do not reply to this mail uh, click here to provide the request for information keep in mind that we can customize this um, so generally this link is disabled because uh, it's to be uh, uh, filled by the external person so if you see here it's, it gives an option like um, I mean, these this is like a, actually part of a correspondence rule so again we can configure that on that particular assignment shape so if you go here assignment details so you can put the correspondence name what kind of correspondence rule that you want to put okay so by default it takes up an existing correspondence rule so that's what has that information but when i say that information i'm just referring to this email content this is there by default in the correspondence rule that is uh, if you don't give any correspondence name it just gives a standard one okay now let's see how it looks like for a external person so i think that uh, particular link let's click on that link here by default if you see that link is disabled so what we will do is we'll copy that link alone it's like a hack in real world you send it to that person person only has an option to open it so what we will do we will open a new private window and place that link and then click and you see here this is now oh, it says session status invalid ha huh. i think by some of I guess I'm all figuring out that I've copied it and it's taken the signature and it's not giving me the access. But either way, uh, you the customer will get the same UI as we normally have, and the same way. Um, um, yeah, so it it just shows in the same manner in which uh, a DE1 AIGI will be able to see that particular uh, information. Right, it will be the same thing, but just that it will be on a browser and we can see that. That's it. All right. Um, any putting uh, in that kind of sums up an exercise. So three exercises that we completed. Right. 
Yeah, so that those are the exercises for routing, right? Okay, so uh, give me one second. I think there's one final question. So that brings up to what I want to cover in today's session. But there is an additional thing that I want to show you guys. Um, so the question that was asked. So you know we are not changing the status. Once external user finishes the task, where are we changing the status? No, we have not written to change the status. Yeah, we, we can change that here. Um, so we can change it here and the end um, say for example here. So on the end shape of this one, of that particular flow, we can give the status here like um, this is now pending investigation. So we'll go for pending investigation. Yeah, but we are not explicitly doing that. Uh, we just did that now. All right. Now, um, okay. Let me just. There is a good diagram for uh, all this relationship between work basket, work list, and all these things. Um, or the work group and all that want to in relationship. What uh, Saran was asking. I generally don't give that to students because it leads, they get all confused, but uh, you guys can take a look at it. Um, so, I will say group. Uh, I think I don't have that. I, I, will, I will just figure that out. Actually, one person has created it and he has put it on PDN. It's actually a pretty interesting document that he's created it. So, um, yeah, I will find that um, image and I, I will show it to you. Diagram it again, I will show it to you. Right? All right, um, so that's all from my end. Um, I will upload the video in some time. Um, let me know if there are any further doubts here. Uh, Rahul, I have one question regarding routing. So <clears throat> the work has been assigned or route to a, routed to a particular user. It's lying there uh, unattended, not moving forward. So is there any way to automatically reroute it to some other person? Um, OK, yeah. So. Yeah, so there is an option for that as well. So um, there is no option to automatically reroute. out. OK. Um, so there is an SLA or something, or, yeah, or yeah. there is no way. Correct. Yeah, correct. So if you, um, uh, yeah. Um, so what you need to do is you can have, if you open the SLA rule, then you have this option here on the SLA rule like transfer. Okay, so if you go to this SLA rule, say for example, I open some random SLA rule. Okay. Now on this SLA rule, there is a default option like here for transfer. That way, you can transfer it to some particular person, work list, or work basket. You can transfer it. That clear? So this way, you can transfer it. Um, so there are some standard wins to check if it is past deadline or past goal, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there is, I think, you will find it here. Uh, think, I think that should be there. Is it past deadline? Or you can create it also. So you should be able to find that here has been resolved, has notes, has previous attachments, is covered. Mm, let me see. There should be something for pass deadline, pass code. Apparently, there is no how to the box when rule to check this. So, 
it's okay that that's not a problem you, you can just write yeah. one just figure that out highly that should be there uh, i don't know it's not there yeah okay. but you can just put a value yeah but but it, it's not uh shouldn't be that difficult you can just put a when rule and you can just check uh, um uh but see ideally you don't need to check it because this particular action will be triggered only when the goal is reached right? okay, okay, okay okay you don't actually need to go and check it and uh, another thing is uh, rahul if at all uh there is only one operator in work basket or the that particular work is going to get routed to that particular only that particular person so if that particular person is not available for some time uh, is there a way to uh, create a delegate or substitute person who can do yeah. this work so for that you have this option called as uh, substitute operator on this operator rule um, instance you have this if you see my screen here Let's say substitute operator type, you can route it to another operator or you can route it to a work basket. Generally, it's a good practice to figure out before a person goes and leave. You can say unavailable from this to this, and then you can check it. And then you can say substitute operator. Yeah, generally, who does this operator uh, ID unavailable from and to update? Who is it? Manager or? Because user will not be having access to all these operator ID changes, right? Okay, so uh, theoretically, uh, this will be done by the. There will be an admin person will be there, uh, like a Pega admin. That's the role. So he is the one who will be doing that. But in real time, nobody does this. These features are not at all used in real world. But uh, for theory, we can say that it should be done by the admin. And the other thing uh, is, um, if if a work is in a work basket, if there is a only one user in the work basket, or that work basket got deleted, what will happen to those works? Rahul, how do we access? Yeah, so you, if if that kind of scenario comes uh, where you delete the work basket, uh, and uh, somehow the work basket is deleted, and even though there are assignments in that. Then you need to go. You need to. You will need. Ideally, that's a that's a mess in the system. So what you need to do is, you have to write um, your own custom activity to reassign those cases. So you have to um, uh, do an OBJ. Yeah, correct. You have to do an OBJ browse on the assign dash work basket class, and then based on that, you will have to reassign. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Rahul. Thanks a lot for clearing these doubts. No problem. It's good. It's good that you guys are thinking and asking doubts. It's good. So I think um, there was a question. Um, I think someone had emailed me. So they want to prepare for first. These are the exam preparation. What are the tips? So um, first thing is that um, that folder, which I will share with all of you in a bit. So this is the folder for that. Um, I think I should be sharing this one with you guys soon. So um, there are some quizzes here, okay? Which is again, this is from PDN. Um, but what important things that you guys have to see, which uh, some of my recent students, what they learned, um, the, what they felt was important, is this for this document, CSSA 7.1 Study Guide. So this has all the uh, bullet points and things that uh, this is again contributed by someone on PDN so, and I think measure something. So I haven't deleted that person's name. So his name you can find at the extreme bottom. But uh, here you will find all bullet points and everything. So make sure you go through this. Okay. Now seeing the questions that you have to learn are these ones, these two. So, uh, but again, you have lot more questions like it's endless a lot of dumps but uh, fr from what I hear from my students who recently passed the exam is these two are what uh, most of the questions came from okay so go through these two first let me know if there are any doubts just keep in mind that it's under this so you see CSSA 7.1 study guide then under CSSA questions you have NK latest and this 7.2, 6.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7
not PDF. All right, um, I think that's all. Uh, Saran and I was just searched quickly for that uh, that uh, screenshot, but I didn't get it. Uh, but I, I will I will get it and I, I will send it across to you guys. Okay, or to, on tomorrow's session I will show, explain it to you as well. Okay, all right, guys. Uh, I think that's all from mind for today. I will upload the video in some time. Uh, make sure that you do this exercise um, because uh, we have created a lot of operator IDs, rules, and all those things. And they uh, generally the way I showed it to you, it looked simple. That's because I have good experience doing that. But once you start doing it, it's pretty obvious you will make mistakes. So make sure you do this exercise without fail. And you will be stuck dedicate at least two hours for these exercises. Okay. And try it. And uh, because when, once you can get an understanding of work group, work list, um, and these things, uh, very few people actually in the industry know how these things work properly. So that is a skill you guys have to develop because in interviews also, this is very, very commonly asked work group, work list. Now how to assign the skill based routing and all those things. Okay. Uh, all right, guys. I think let's meet tomorrow at the same time. Good day, everyone. Thank you so much for your time.